The next um, next speaker um, is uh, Harry Bernosian. Um, he is the one who does have a disclosure. He'll disclose as well. He is the president of uh, Custom Probiotics. He comes to us through a, a very long and, and, and uh, uh, journey. I'm going to say a distinguished journey. He started out in Beirut, where he got his first degree in chemical engineering, I believe. He went to Manchester, London, got his second degree in petrochemical engineering. And then finally saw the light in the USC and got a real good degree in chemical engineering. I then spent about 20 years working as, in, the, um, in the waste management industry as a designer. And somehow he got an idea, I'm not sure how, maybe he'll tell us. He got an idea about probiotics and their possible benefits and started a company and is actually doing very active in our community, beneficial of our patients. Um, we're really seeing some good work coming out of his laboratories and our patients seem to be doing well. So we've asked him to come and talk and give us a bit of a primer on probiotics. Good morning. The sewage treatment and digestive system are very similar. Sewage treatment is an aerobic process. The digestive system is an anaerobic sewage treatment, I think. And uh, in the aerobic process, it takes normally in the sewage treatment, it takes one day of aeration. In the anaerobic processes, in sewage treatment, it takes maybe one week. So it's a slower process. What the comparison, huh? But that's the way it is. Uh, I'm going to be talking about intestinal microflora because that's the essential uh, topic deals with the digestive system because understanding intestinal microflora will make us better understand what's going on in the digestive system and why. So we have about 10, 100 trillion bacteria in the digestive system as well as it starts from the mouth, the small and large intestines, as well as the vaginal area. And there are more than 400 different kinds of bacteria. And we have about two to three pounds, or even four pounds of bacteria in our digestive system, good and bad bacteria, total. And here you can see the, the bacterial concentration. As we go down in the digestive system, the bacterial concentration is greatly increased. And 90% of the bacteria are in the, in the colonic area. That is why, in my opinion, we can have colon cancer, but we cannot have a small intestinal cancer because the majority are in the large intestine. And we have, therefore, harmful as well as beneficial bacteria. And the harmful, the, the ones that we encounter a lot, is Clostridium difficile. And you, where you have a lot of diarrhea situation, and people take a lot of antibiotics. And we have, of course, the good bacteria, which is the, we have the lactobacilli, which is uh, about, uh, we have about 15 different kinds of lactobacilli, and we have about 10 different kinds of bifidobacteria. Uh, this is just a picture of the digestive system, which I'll just ask. And here again is a very nice table where it, it indicates. The, the bacterial concentration from mouth to the colonic area. As, as you can see, as we go down in the digestive system, the bacterial concentration goes up. And as well, as we can see that the lactobacilli in the small intestine uh, is, is equal to the bifidobacteria. But when we go to the colonic area, the majority are bifidobacteria. This is a demonstration of the intestinal immune system, and we see a lot of the villi. The, the, the surface area of the digestive system is the size of a tennis court. Because of the villi, there are so many villi that the whole surface area is huge. And therefore, um, when we want to improve the intestinal microflora, it, it takes some time. Depends on the dosage that you're using probiotics, and we, I will talk about that. This is a very important uh, picture, let's say. What are the factors that affect the intestinal microflora? Let's start from mode of birth, whether it's C-section or vaginal. If the child is C-section born, the, the, they get the bacteria from the environment of the hospital, and therefore it's not as good as a normal vaginal birth. However, if the mother has some problems, then that will affect the child as well through the vaginal. That's why the second one is maternal flora. And therefore, 
uh, it's very important that during childbirth, before, especially before, uh, one should really take care of their uh, health, as well as if they're going to take antibiotics, it's important that they also take probiotics so that their flora is in good shape. And, if, 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 and, and even after that, if they have some questions about their health, they can always give probiotics to the infant, the newborn. Then the infant environment, which is, I guess, antibiotics and drugs, very important. The child is born, before the child is born, if the mother is taking antibiotics, that will affect the flora of the mother and will pass maybe to the child. And if the child is born, they, they have a lot of ear infections and boom, they get antibiotics. That will affect negatively the intestinal microflora. Probiotics, of course, uh, will, will help normalize the flora. Of course, it depends on the formulation that you have as well as the dosage. Then we have the nine digestible carbohydrates, prebiotics, which is the, like, fruit oligosaccharide or inulin. Diet is extremely important. Sugar is the worst enemy of the digestive system because bad bacteria and yeast grow on sugar. They love sugar. You give sugar and you, you get the results. So, and then of course you have junk foods, you have french fries, ketchup and all that. And so, uh, to bring the immune system up and the normalizing the flora, just taking probiotics and you eat chocolate and all that, don't talk to me. So, age, as you grow older, your intestinal flora <coughs> composition goes down. So we don't talk too much about age, but uh, that's a fact. And then the genes of uh, uh, the family. Here is just a picture of a balancing of the, uh, the between the good and the bad bacteria. So normally we should keep the good bacteria um, uh, at a higher concentration than the bad bacteria, so that the bad bacteria doesn't overgrow and control the digestive system. And what are probiotics? The definition of probiotics are, is, are live microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts, the word adequate is very important, confer a health benefit to the host. So using one or two billion of probiotic bacteria a day will not benefit you. We have 100 trillion bacteria. So we want to change that balance. How can we change the balance? So dosage is very important. And dosage for every person is different because the intestinal microflora of, of every human being is different. It's like a fingerprint. So I'll go to the next one. This is a, a, a very nice presentation of the mechanism of probiotics. Uh, these are all taken from medical journals. And I would be glad to email you the complete articles. Just email me. and will have all of it. Uh, as you can see, we can have a competition for nutrients, immune stimulation, very important reduction of inflammation, especially people who have IBD. Uh, and so this is a whole immune system. That, uh, they say the gut is the center of the immune system. So that's very important. This is another representation of the mechanism of action of probiotics. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this article is specific for inflammatory bowel disease, and uh, the main points are uh, blocking pathogenic bacterial effects by producing antibacterial substances and competing with pathogens for binding to epithelial cells, to defining the balance between necessary and excessive def death defense immunity, and the third, promoting intestinal epithelial cells. Now, what's happening? Mechanisms of action. When you take high doses of probiotics or a good dose of probiotics, what, is, what are the basic mechanisms? One, you can have a direct effect, which means it can, it can kill bad bacteria, depending on dosage, and depends how much you kill, but again. Number two mechanism is, uh, is changing the environment of the colonic area. So that, as I said, the, the importance of bad bacteria is reduced, Third is improving the immune system. And why is all that? Because when your flora is balanced, your digestion is improved, your immune system goes up. As a result, your immune system takes care of your problems. So the effect of probiotics is not a direct effect, it's an indirect effect. So the immune system is essential 
for anybody. This uh, diagram, I put it, which may be out of the scope of the report. This, the, there's a, a lot of research on the brain-gut relationship, and we have a specific formula for autistic children. And when they, uh, and the majority of them, if not 90, more than 90%, have digestive problems. And when we, they use probiotics, we have a specific formula, which is called d lactate 3 formula. And we go up in dosage. We have six-year-old autistic children that take 800 billion a day. And uh, so the, we have a dosage protocol, and we go up gradually in dosage. We start, let's say, from 50 or 100 billion a day, maybe even less. And so the mother, they go up, and the mothers, they decide on the dosage based on the results they get. So some people may be fine with 100 billion, some people will be fine with 800 billion. And the response of autistic children vary because it's a spectrum. So some people get perfect, very good results, some people get very mild results. So it's important to understand the gut-brain relationship. And people who have IBD or IBS, they may have be depressed or tired because it directly affect the brain. Uh, Okay. Another point that I want to make while I'm here, the intestinal microflora of a child becomes well established by the age of three. And we have a flyer explaining why autism occurs. Uh, and we have about 85 responses to questionnaires to our, in our website. And, and you can see that all of them, autism occurs between the ages of deep zero to three. Why is that? because the intestinal flora and the immune system of a child becomes established by the age of three. So during that time, if you give antibiotics, if the child is C-section born, not breastfed, uh, if mother has some problems before birth, these affect the immune system. And when it comes to vaccination period, and uh, if all these negative points are there, then, and if they give a few vaccinations in one shot, the child cannot take it, and it can hit the brain. That gut-brain relationship is so important, that's why I'm concentrating on it. This, these are the different probiotic bacteria, just for your information. We care about 12, 13, 14 different strains. This is a very nice presentation also on the health benefit of probiotics. And I will pass it because it's very clear. Again, we, uh, now we get we get questions as to what is L. acidophilus for, or what is L. guantanum for, or what is L. rhamnosus. L. rhamnosus, for example, is very specific for Clostridium difficile, as well as Saccharomyces boulardii. So we have a specific formula for people who have Clostridium difficile, where we put the majority we put uh, L. rhamnosus. So, uh, as you can see, we have, uh, there are different, uh, uh, the, the probiotic bacteria overlap in their characteristics, which means that if somebody says, what, is, what does L. acidophilus do? Well, you can have L. plantaro and L. rhamnosus do the same thing. So by combining them, you get a synergistic effect. So a multi-strain formulation is always better than a single-strain formulation. And this is a very important uh, graph, let's say. Each probiotic bacteria is tested genetically to be that specific strain. And this table indicates the variety of uh, location genetically of each strain. So we pick up each uh, a strain from each area and then combine them together so that you can get a whole effect for the small as well as large intestine. So that's why a combination of lactobacilli and bifidobacteria uh, together is uh, very important. This table also indicates the acid resistance of probiotics. And therefore, we use uh, probiotic bacteria that are acid resistant. And uh, uh, there's more data here, which I will not go through, and this will uh, end my presentation. Now, uh, regarding uh, uh, dosages 
uh, as I said, is, is extremely important. And uh, as I said, the dosage for every person is different. And we start with a low dosage. And uh, whether they have, whatever digestive issue they have. So normalizing the flora is essential because that brings the immune system up and, uh, and understanding the intestinal microbiome. Because the digestive system is a biological entity. It's not just a, a pipe where you can go in and out. It's a biological entity. You cannot see the bacteria. By, if you go inside, you cannot see the bacteria. So uh, understanding all this is, uh, would be very helpful to the medical profession. And combining the medical uh, uh, evaluation is very important. Combining that with the uh, good bacteria and diet together, you can get optimum uh, results. <coughs> Thank you very much.